Pretend that we had two parametric equations and we wanted to combine them so that they're represented as one equation that is in rectangular form. Take for example in question number one we have these two equations and they're both in terms of t. Rather than having x, y, and t, we want one equation exclusively that's in terms of x and y so that we can graph it in an x, y plane. To do this, we have to use a technique known as substitution, and that involves substituting parts of one equation into another so that we totally eliminate, in this case, t. So what I'll do is isolate for t here, and I can do that by taking the sixth root of both sides. So the sixth root of x and the sixth root of t to the power of six. And what this will give me is x sixth rooted is equal to t. And I'll substitute that now into this equation where I have y is equal to, instead of t, I'll write down the sixth root of x raised to the power of two. Now remember the sixth root of x is the same thing as x to the power of one over six. So I'll write down x to the power of one over six raised to the power of two, and a sixth times two is one third. So I have x to the power of one third, which is the third root of x. So rather than having two parametric equations, we now have one parametric equation where I have y is equal to the third root of x, or the cube root of x. We now have to sketch the following equation. I'll put an xy plane on the screen and a graph of the cube root of a function looks like this. And if you didn't know that, you can randomly select some values of x and graph those, and you should end up with a graph that appears like this. When you do problems like these, you want to make sure that the domain and range of the new rectangular equation that you found matches that of the original two parametric equations that were given. What I mean by that is, take for example y is equal to t to the power of 2. Any value that I put in for t, I'll get a positive y output, which means that we shouldn't have any y values that are negative. So this part of the graph shouldn't be included because this means that we have y values that are negative. Therefore, only what is being highlighted also suits the domain and range of the two original parametric equations. Our domain, therefore, should be x must be greater or equal to 0 and x approaches infinity. Now, if you're still confused and would like to see the answer to question number two, leave us a comment below and we'll gladly upload it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.